Brodsky. It's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Pat McCracken, Johnny, Universal Adjustment Bureau. Hi, Pat, what's new? At the moment, Cooper's Bend, Nevada. Never heard of it. Neither did I till this morning. They're having a big celebration out there, Frontier Week. So what do you want from me? A beard? It might help if you started growing one, Johnny. And how about a 10-gallon hat? You got one of those? Oh, sure. And my horse is tied up in the bedroom. Now, look, what's this all about, Pat? Well, from what I can gather, Cooper's Bend was just a sleepy little western town dying on its feet. That is, until last week. So what happened last week? A publicity man named Bill Williams organized this Frontier Week to uh, wake the town up. I guess somebody out there doesn't like being waked up. What do you mean? Oh, looks like somebody's trying to put Bill Williams to sleep. The hard way. I'll be right over. Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. And now, act one of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Home Office Universal Adjustment Bureau, Hartford, Connecticut. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the killer's brand matter. <laughs> Expense account item one, $1.20, cab fare from my apartment at the office of Universal Adjustment Bureau. Pat McCracken was waiting for me. Not too much to go on, actually, Johnny, but I figure it's worth your taking a trip out to Cooper's Bend to see what it's what. One of the companies we represent is a hefty policy on Bill Williams' life. Who is this Bill Williams? What's he do? A uh, little of this, little of that, I guess. Sort of a fly-by-night type. Freelance publicity, that sort of thing. Now, you suggested over the phone that there'd been an attempt on his life out there. Well, at least somebody took a shot at him. Oh, you have any idea who? No. That's what I want you to find out. Could have been an accident, Pat. Maybe somebody got carried away during oh, the celebration. Oh, at 2 o'clock in the morning, Johnny. Even during Frontier Week, people in Cooper's Bend don't stay up that late. Okay. Where do I find Williams? There's only one hotel. You look for him there. And, Johnny, yeah? watch yourself. Some of those characters out there can shoot pretty straight. And one of them is pretty riled up about something. Shoot straight? He missed Williams, didn't he? Oh, yeah. The first time. Expense account item two, $187.50. Incidentals and transportation by plane and a rented car to Cooper's Bend, Nevada. The town was baking in the sun when I arrived in the middle of the afternoon. Aside from the fact that there were cars parked on the main street instead of a string of horses, the place could have easily passed as a set for a western movie. A saloon, a general store, one weather-beaten hotel, the works. I kept wanting to go around behind the buildings to see if they were real. There was even a big horse trough in front of the hotel. I stopped for a moment to take a look at it, and that was my first mistake. <laughs> Suddenly, I heard a crowd hey! bearing down on me. Come on, let's get him. Hey, look at him, a real dude. I'll lay off him. This is kid stuff. What do you mean, lay off of him? You know the frontier we grew. Hey, look, look, what's this all about? Come on, mister, off with your shirt. My shirt? Now, uh, just a minute. Hello, partner. Anybody on the street without a 10-gallon hat during Frontier Week gets sunk in the horse trough. Yeah, well, look, I just got into town. How am I supposed to know the rules? Well, this is one good way of finding them out, stranger. Uh, Anybody want to sell me a 10-gallon hat quick? Too late, buddy. Well, he's got a sense of humor anyway. Come on, I'll help you off with your shirt, stranger. Okay, okay. That's it. Now, just take it easy, partner. Take it easy. <laughs> Welcome to Frontier Week, Oh, thanks. Thanks a lot. Item 3, 50 cents. Replacement of three buttons on my shirt. I bid a fond farewell to the horse trough committee and went to the hotel to find Bill Williams, the publicity man. He wasn't there at the moment, but the clerk told me I might find him at the newspaper office. That was three doors down the street, the Cooper's Bend Sentinel, no less. Bill Williams wasn't there, but for the moment, I didn't miss him at all. Oh, hello. Well, hi. You must be Miss Cooper's Bend Frontier Week. Ha, uh ha. -huh. You run the paper? Wrong again. I just work here. Well, I'm not doing very well so far, am I? Oh, I don't know. Don't give up. Oh, I won't. Uh, my name's Johnny Dollar. Uh... Lois, Johnny. Well, I'm looking for a guy named Bill Williams, Lois. Do you know him? Yeah, I know. Where can I find him? 
Well, this is as good a place as any. He ought to be here soon. Last I saw him, he was with Fred Kirby. Kirby? The editor of this paper. The two of them were all wrapped up in further plans for our glorious Frontier Week. I gather Frontier Week doesn't appeal to you. It's a two-bit idea, like everything else about this plan. Oh, here's Fred. This is Johnny Dollar, Fred Kirby. Well, thanks, but we've already met. Mr. Kirby was one of the boys who helped me take a swim in the horse trough a couple of minutes ago. <laughs> all in fun, Mr. Dollar. Part of Frontier Week. Yeah, sure. Kirby, I'm looking for Bill Williams. Oh, he's out making some final arrangements for the rodeo this afternoon. He ought to be back in a few minutes. Okay. Any place I can get a cup of coffee while I'm waiting? Oh, sure. Four doors down the street. You can't miss it. I'll show you where it is, Johnny. Fine. Thanks. Um, I, uh, I thought you had some, uh, work to get out, Lois. It'll keep. You don't mind, do you, Fred? Oh. No, of course not. I just want to take your time. As we left, I could sense an undercurrent between Lois and Fred Kirby. And I could see his point. Matter of fact, though, undercurrent was too mild a word for Lois. Item 320 cents, coffee for Lois and me. You're going to be in town long, Johnny? Oh, it depends. How long does Frontier Week last? This is the last day. Oh. Rodeo this afternoon, dance tonight. That ends it. Then the town goes back to sleep, huh? Probably. I won't be here to watch it, though. Oh, where are you going? Away. As far away as I can get. Come on. For good. Well, how about your job? You mean the paper? That's a job? I think I can get along without it. How about the editor? Can he get along without you? Fred Kirby? Sure, why not? I don't know. I thought he'd have Where attended... you been, Lois? I've been looking for you. Having a cup of coffee, obviously. This is Johnny Dollar, Dan. Dan Biggers, Johnny. Owns a ranch near here. Dollar? Hi. Uh, look, Lois, about the dance tonight. What time will I pick you up? Oh, I don't know about the dance, Dan. I don't know if I'm going or not. We're going to go, Lois. Look, Dan. I said we're going to go. Oh, for heaven's sake. Thanks for the coffee, son. Lois! You know, Biggers, if you don't mind my saying so, that approach doesn't seem to go over so well with her. Yeah? Well, I do mind your saying so. I don't need any advice from you. Okay, okay. And just for the record, Lois and I are engaged. Oh, congratulations. Don't get funny with me. Oh, now, easy, figure. Simmer down. You simmer down, Dollar. What do you mean? I mean, stay away from Lois. Are you kidding? So I bought her a cup of coffee. Anything wrong with that? You heard me. Stay away from her. One thing about Lois, she sure had the knack of stirring people up. The news that she was engaged to Biggers was quite a surprise, though, and I wondered if she was as eager about it as he was. If so, she didn't show it. But all of this wasn't getting my job done, which was to find out who'd made the attempt on Bill Williams' life. I went back to the newspaper office, and pretty soon he came in. He turned out to be the gent who'd supervised my dunking in the horse trough. Well, you're probably not feeling very kindly toward me at the moment, Dollar. Why not? You come all the way out here to protect me and get thrown in the trough right off the bat. I, I didn't know who you were. Look, you better get yourself a ten-gallon hat so it won't happen again. Don't worry, I'm going to. As I understand it, Williams, this Frontier Week was your idea. Yeah. Yeah, I was driving through here on my way to Frisco a few weeks ago. The town was dead on its feet, but I could see the possibilities of waking it up. So I cooked up this scheme. The town went for it. How come you were so interested in waking the town up? For the dough. What else? I get 10% of the gross on the rodeo, dance, and other celebrations. I figured to get close to 1000 out of it, and frankly, I can use the money. I see. Well, how about this attempt on your life? Come on. Out back, I'll show you. Show me what? My car. There it is. Take a look at the windshield. Yeah. Bullet hole. Mm hmm. How did it happen? I was driving along the road just outside of town the other night, and all of a sudden, whammo! And I got a pretty good idea who did it. Oh. The rancher, Dan Biggers. Oh. Why? I smiled at Lloyd. Oh, now look. Touchy as big as is about Lois, that's not enough reason oh, for Oh, wait, to... wait. She smiled back at me. Is that all there was to it? Of course it was. You think I'm crazy or something? The trigger happy biggers are so jealous of her he can't see straight. I'm not stupid enough to get mixed up in anything like that. Yeah, he's jealous, all right. Lois and I worked together at the newspaper office on some of the publicity for Frontier Week. Biggers didn't like that. Speaking of the newspaper, do you know the editor very well? Little Fred Kirby? Uh, I met him when I first came here, is so all why. He's been keeping an eye on us through the window ever since we've been standing here. Oh? You think he might be interested in Lois? It wouldn't surprise me. He makes that job of hers on the paper pretty easy for her. After all, it wouldn't be hard to be interested in Lois. No, no, I'm sure it wouldn't. 
Well, you'd better quit driving around the roads at night, William. Don't worry. Ever since it happened, I've been staying right here in town at night with a bright light. I think I'm home free now anyway. Yeah? The dance tonight winds up Frontier Week. Tomorrow noon, I get my share of the dough, and then I'm leaving. Yeah, Lois mentioned something about leaving town then, too. <laughs> yeah, she used to make noises about leaving when we were working together. I doubt if she means it, though. I think she's just trying to get Biggers riled up. That isn't hard. Now, wait a minute. Hmm? Remember now, she said it once in the office when Fred Kirby was around. What was his reaction? He didn't say anything at all, but he, he gave her a real funny look. I see. Well, I got to go make the final arrangements for the dance tonight. You going to be there? Oh, yeah. Yeah. In the meantime, Williams, better keep your eyes open. Don't worry. Since that attempt on my life, I sprouted eyes in the back of my head. Oh, and speaking of head. Yeah? You better get yourself a 10-gallon hat. good advice. I had no desire to get dunked again. I started across the street toward the general store, then realized my mistake. There was the reception committee again at the horse shop. I had to get to that store fast. I almost made it, too. Scary, fellas. Oh, well. Expense, item six, 15 bucks for a too-late ten-gallon hat. Dance was in full swing when I got there. I didn't see Lois the figures. Looks like he didn't get that date after all. Pretty soon I spotted Williams near the bandstand. When he saw me, he came over. There, crowd, Dollar. There are more people in Cooper's Bend tonight than ever heard of the place before Frontier Week. Man, I'm really going to clean up. I stayed around a while watching Williams happily counting noses and adding up his 10%. Then I went back to the hotel. There was a message there from Lois. She wanted to see me. This I didn't get, but she'd left word it was important. She'd also left directions for getting to her house, so I drove out. It was outside of town on a back road. The lights were on. But nobody answered my knock. I waited a while and tried the door. There was a fire burning in the fireplace, and the room looked very cozy. All except for one thing. Lois. She was lying in front of the hearth. And she was very dead. Act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. For a long time, people have been saying that the earth is shrinking because transportation is getting faster and faster. And because this is true, people are getting closer, too. Today, our neighbors are not only the ones who live next door to us. They're all over the world. It is axiomatic that one should help his neighbor. But Americans have gone a step further. In addition to individuals helping individuals, now many American cities help many other cities through the Sister City program. Now, perhaps you've heard how it works. If not, here's an example or two. In the fall of 1959, a large area of Nagoya, Japan, was struck by a devastating typhoon. Her sister city, Los Angeles, California, sent tons of relief materials to Nagoya by way of an Air Force plane headed for the area. The Marines and the Navy rendered vital emergency aid during the disaster. When earthquakes shook Villa del Mar, Chile, during the summer of 1960, her sister city, Sausalito, California, sent hundreds of dollars' worth of relief material to help out. Another case in point, the school children of Clovis, New Mexico, sent a number of cultural exchange packages to students in their sister city of Adana, Turkey. There are hundreds of such examples because there are hundreds of sister cities. By using this means of diplomacy, friendship and understanding have increased throughout the world and paved the way for permanent freedom, the right of all men everywhere. And now, act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, and the killer's brand matter. Lois, dead lying on the floor of her living room in front of the fireplace. There was a poker near her hand that had been pulled out of the fire and scorched the rug. At first, that's what I thought she'd been hit with. But then I took a closer look and see she'd struck her head on the heart. There were signs of a struggle in the room. 
Then, suddenly, I heard a noise outside. I ducked into the next room, found a side door, and eased outside. I listened. Nothing. Then I heard the car. By the time I got around in front of the house, it was just disappearing around the bend in the road, running without light. It looked like a station wagon, but that's about all I could make out. I went back into the house and put in a call to the sheriff. He arrived about 20 minutes later. Okay. Looks like there was a fight. She got thrown down and hit her head on the heart. Yeah, that's the way I sized it up. Now let's size you up for a minute, Dollar. Me? Mind telling me what you were doing here tonight? I don't know. Oh, come on, come on. No, I mean it. Lois left a message at my hotel that she wanted to see me. You don't know what about? No. Except it's a good bet this killing ties in somehow with that attempt on Bill Williams' life. Williams thinks it was Dan Biggers took that shot at him. Yeah, that's right. Well, it could be. Dan's always been awful jealous. I had trouble with him once before for the same reason. Oh? A month ago, he beat up a guy pretty bad. On account of Lois? Yeah, yeah. Seems the guy had asked Lois for a date. Trouble was, Lois never discouraged guys asking either. Hey, look, Sheriff. Lois told me earlier today that she was planning to leave town tomorrow. Now, if Dan Biggers learned about that... Yeah. Well, come on. We better drive out to his ranch and have a talk with him. <laughs> Gate, Johnny. Ranch house is up on the rise. Yeah. No lights on up there. You think Dan might have cleared out? Hey! Came from that clump of brush over there. Hold it right where you are, Sheriff. I've got you covered. Now don't be a fool, Dan. You drop that gun and come out of there. I said hold it. Had to take me in, huh? Well, I'm not going just now, Sheriff. Look, Dan. First, I'm going to find out who killed Lois and take care of him. Then you can question me all you want. Very interesting you should know about the killing already, Dan. I can think of one reason you might. Yes, again, Dollar. I was in town when the call came in. One of the deputies told me about it. I figure it differently, Dan. You found out Lois was going to leave town tomorrow. Lois, leave? You're crazy. That's what she told me. She'd never do that. She'd never leave me. You tried to stop her. She grabbed a poker and swung at you. You threw her down on the hearth. That's a lie, you hear me? Dan, you're acting like a fool. Now, now give me that gun, man. I'm not coming in now, Sheriff. I can put these shots where I want to. Don't make me put them in you. Okay, Dan. You got the drop on us now, but I'm coming back. And I'm going to take you one way or another. You know, Sheriff, I can't help feeling kind of sorry for Dan. Yeah, he always did have a knot in his brain where Lois was concerned. You really think he killed her? I don't know. Dan's pretty smart sometimes. That routine he was just giving us, it might have been a cover. Sheriff, you happen to know if Dan drives a station wagon? He drives a pickup around town mostly, and I think he's got a coupe, too, but no station wagon. Why? That's what I spotted pulling away from Lois' house. He didn't get the license number? No, it was running without license. Not much help, Johnny. There's a lot of station wagons in this part of the country. Expense account had to make one dollar, two drinks for me, while I tried to put some pieces together. However much I shifted them around, they still seemed to add up to Dan Baker. But somehow I wasn't convinced. If he was the killer, why hadn't he taken off? Of course, maybe he figured he couldn't very well leave his ranch. So I went round and round again and ended up nowhere. I started thinking of other possibilities. Bill Williams, for instance. I'd seen him at the dance, but he could have left for half an hour and nobody would have missed him in the crowd. But why? I couldn't figure any motive for him. And then I thought of Fred Kirby, the editor. Yeah, he might be worth talking to. So I went to the newspaper office. Kirby and Bill Williams were there. Any idea who killed her, Johnny? I don't know, Williams. That's what I want to talk to the two of you about. I'll bet anything it was Dan Biggers. What makes you so sure, Kirby? You saw him around Lois. You know the way he was. Question is, if he did it, why? Lois said she was leaving. Maybe he couldn't stand any idea. He claims he didn't know she was planning to leave. Well, that's a lie. Oh, is it? I heard her tell him once right here in this office. You know, it's quite a coincidence. What's that? Lois was going to leave town tomorrow, Williams. So were you. 
You uh, weren't by any chance going to leave together now, were you? Now, look, G-Man, I told you there was nothing between us. You think I'm a jerk to go fooling around with her knowing what Biggers was like? Sure, she kidded me about, uh, uh, what, what was it, Kirby? Hitching a ride to Frisco with me? Yeah, here in the office once. Williams just laughed it off, and that's all there was to it. Hey, wait a minute. If Biggers happened to hear about it... Yeah, maybe. No, Dollar, I was smart enough not to get involved with her. Matter of fact, I guess I'm one of the few guys in town who can make that statement. Hey, you don't have to talk that way about her. I'm sorry, I guess I'm tired. There you go, turn in. I'll see you in the morning, Dollar. You'll be around, huh? Yeah, to pick up my money. Nice. You know, Kirby, you're trying pretty hard to pin this on Dan Biggers. Why? Because I think he did it. He didn't want Lois to leave. There's someone else didn't want her to leave either. Who? You. What? You've been carrying the torch for Lois quite a while, haven't you? What's that got to do with it? And what business is it of yours? I think it all ties in. Well, I didn't kill her if that's what you're thinking. You drive a station wagon, don't you? So what? After I discovered her body, I spotted a station wagon leaving her house. But a lot of guys drive station wagons around here. I wasn't near her place. I, well, I didn't use the wagon at all tonight. You're lying. Now, look. Come on, open up, Kirby. Well, I... Okay, Dollar. I... I drove out to her place to try to talk her out of leaving. Go on. Well, that's all there is. When I got there, I changed my mind and came back to town. Sure. I didn't go inside, Dollar. I didn't kill her. I swear it. I called the sheriff, and he took Kirby in for further questions. But by morning, he hadn't changed his story. Oh, he admitted being at the scene of the murder, but that's all he'd admit. He was still a big question mark, and we were still nowhere. The sheriff went out to Bigger's ranch again, hoping Dan would give himself up peaceably if he knew Kirby was in custody. I had a cup of coffee and went outside. Bill Williams was in front of the hotel. Anything new on the killing, Johnny? Well, you know Kirby was being questioned. Yeah. Surprised me at first, but then I got to thinking, you know, he's a strange guy, he doesn't say much, but there's a lot going on inside, particularly about Lois. Yeah, yeah. Did you get your cut of the dough from Frontier Week all right? Yeah, well, I'm sure glad it's over. That killing last night turned the whole deal sour. I'd be glad to get the taste of this town out of my mouth. Uh-huh. When are you leaving? I told the sheriff I'd be around in case he wants me for further questioning. I'll leave when he says the word. There he is. There he is. What's with the crowd heading this way? I don't know. Okay, well, we got this last. What are you talking about? You're wearing your 10 gallon hat, and that sure looks like a horse trough. You're standing next to That's right. Now, look, Frontier Week is over. I'm in no mood for jokes this morning. I'll lay off. No, not this morning. I'm sick of the whole idea. I said lay off, and I mean it. The crowd broke up and drifted away, and the street went to sleep again. All of a sudden, I woke up. I thought of that hot poker I'd found lying near Lois's body, and a couple of things added up fast. Sure, it was a wild idea, but it was worth a chance. Bunch of jerks. Hey, you know, Bill, when I first arrived in town, you ducked me in this horse trough because I wasn't wearing a 10-gallon hat. Yeah, it was part of Frontier Week. Well, you're not wearing a hat now. Look, like I told those guys, Frontier Week's over. I still want to return the compliment. Am I going to have trouble with you too, Dollar? I guess you are, because I'm going to duck you in that trough. Take off your shirt. Now, look, stay away from I me. I said take it off. Get your hands off of me. What's the matter? Are you afraid to take it off? What are you talking about? Let go. I said let go. Where? What do you know? A nice big burn on your chest and on your arm. A few scratches, too. Lois did that just before you killed her. Branded you. Okay, smart boy. There's a gun in my pocket and it's pointed right at you, so just relax. You were a lot more involved with Lois than you were letting on, Williams. Why did you kill her? I was trying to shake her. She wouldn't shake. She wanted to go with you, huh? Yeah. And that would have been just great, dragging a... Well, dragging something like her with me to San Francisco. That's a real sweet thing to say. I suppose you said it to her, too. That's when she grabbed the poker. Come on, Dollar. We're getting off the street. Now move. My hand was beside the horse trough. I scooped the water right into his face. <laughs> the shot went wild, but his chin was wide open. <laughs> yeah, Bill Williams got ducked after all. <laughs> Expense account item 10, $183.50. Transportation and incidentals back home. Total expenses, $528. Remarks. About Dan Biggers. 
He really wasn't such a bad guy. Except that, like the sheriff said, he had a knot in his brain about Lois. He sold his ranch and moved away. About Bill Williams? Well, you better cancel out his policy, Pat. He's due to go on trial soon. And in my book, he's a pretty bad risk. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Our star will return in just a moment. Our flag now numbers 50 stars. And behind each star, there stands yet another flag representing one of the 50 states. Oklahoma's state flag depicts an Osage warrior's circular buckskin shield from which hang seven eagle feathers. Across the shield is the Indian's calumet, or pipe of peace, crossed with a white man's peace symbol, the olive branch. On the shield are small crosses, the Indian's graphic sign for stars, indicating lofty ideals or a purpose for high endeavor. The background of the flag is a field of blue, the blue of the Oklahoma sky, signifying loyalty and devotion. The important symbols, however, are the calumet and the olive branch. These override the shield, the symbol of war, and bespeak a predominant love of peace by a united people. Oklahoma state flag, the flag of the 46th state to enter the Union, was adopted on April 2nd, 1925. Now, here's our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, a terrible storm that yields up a body from the deep. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. You've been listening to the OTR Gold Network. Find more classic radio at otrgold.com.